Can you hear me now, Vic? Yes, sir. Yeah. I can't get my computer to uh, increase the volume. I don't know what's wrong. We call it, in, we call it progress. <laughs> yeah, really? I guess. Do you, do you suppose that students in high school write notes to one, one another, little paper notes? I would guess not. I don't think so. I, they can't write cursive anyway. Well, that's true. <laughs> a curse is out the window. That's a shame. It is a shame. My car is still in the body shop. They uh, are supposed to have a uh, I, I had a rocker panel that had to be repaired. They tried to repair it and uh, they said it was FUBAR. <laughs> That's, uh, I guess I shouldn't say that if it's being recorded, but uh, uh, they had to order a part and it's due in Tuesday, but that's the day I, uh, well, they have to work on it anyway after they get it. But on Tuesday, I'll be in, uh, Chicago for hospital board meeting. So I don't know when I'll get my car back, but uh, that rental car is good. I was down in uh, Nashville, Indiana Friday to uh, uh, do the toast to the flag wearing my colonial uniform. Oh. And uh, I had been asked to go down there and do that. So I uh, got down there and it was 77 miles down. And I, uh, I saw the weather forecast and I just booked a room. And it's a good thing I did because it gets nasty. <laughs> really? Yeah, so, so I got back uh, yesterday. It's bad when you leave for one day and you don't have don't have a change of clothes and all that sort of <laughs> yeah. and of, of all things a, a really nice hotel room and had everything except soap there was no soap in the room no soap shampoo works but <laughs> oh, yeah you have to do what you have to do <laughs> yeah they had two little tubes of shampoo and no soap <laughs> I'm surprised we're the only two on. It's still just one minute to go, isn't it? Yeah, really, me too. Well, we can be a subcommittee. Well, yeah, absolutely. How was Santa Claus on uh, that the next on, day? Yeah, it's Sunday. I had uh, probably a hundred kids, and uh, one little boy was so cute. He uh, he had already told his mom he didn't believe in Santa Claus. And he may have been blindsided when I called him by name. <laughs> <laughs> and he, uh, he started saying, uh, I, want a, I want a new iPad because I have to borrow my mom's iPad because he has more uh, FPS. Oh, boy. he's so smart. And, you know, that's frames per second. And, for a young kid like that to know all that stuff is just amazing to me. It is. It really is. It's good news, bad news in that situation. But when uh, when, he, when his mom uh, took a picture of that exchange, she uh, she sent it to me. And she said, "Said that boy amazes me all the time." <laughs> <laughs> How old was it around 18 or 19? <laughs> <laughs> no, I I think he's I'm not positive. He, he's probably in about fourth grade, I guess. I don't know. All right. But uh, he's a smart kid.
Yesterday we had treats with Santa at uh, the Vintage Fire Museum. Oh, good. Yeah. And we we had a ton of people that showed up. There's Mr. John Flanagan. Hello, John. <clears throat> Just got of the other Zoom. Zoom. I don't know whether Mike's going to come on or not. Say a quick hi. Yeah. There's Leslie. Hi. Oh. Our daughter. That's your daughter. Okay. Is this the best father you've ever had? Yep. Yep. <laughs> Great. <laughs> We've been here from Oregon for the holidays. So. Oh, good. Good. Yeah, here for three weeks. Okay. And she did my beard. Did. I she did. Pretty I decent, did. decent job, yeah. <laughs> well, I guess, yeah. It looks like a professional job. Yeah. <laughs> First beard I've ever trimmed. <laughs> My barber has refused to get vaccinated, so I don't go to her anymore. Oh, really? So I had a pretty big bush, and Leslie <laughs> just dived right in. And <laughs> trimmed it. Okay. Nice to see you guys. <laughs> okay. Now, Gordon, Gordon and I, okay, here's Bob Roberts coming on. Hello, Bob. Well, you went from gray to black. I don't know. Is that progress? I don't know. <laughs> Bob, can you hear us? We can't hear you, Bob. <laughs> While he's doing that, I'm going to go get something to eat. My, I just got off of the other Zoom and, Zoom, and it's my lunch time, so I'll sure, be back. Go right ahead. Time. Bob Roberts, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. I'm trying to get to something on there and stuff that. Now you're coming in a little better now. I am okay. Yeah, that's but, much uh, better. Um, just looking here, I thought I had this thing turned on. Yeah, we can hear you pretty well. Gordon, you can hear him, can't you? I can hear him. He's not uh, not as loud as usual, but I can hear him. Yeah. Hello. Well, there's Jeremy. Hello, Jeremy. Oh, I, I see Vic. I saw Gordon. Hi, Jeremy. I see a placeholder for my Uncle John. Yep, he's, he went to get some food. Who else is here? Bob Roberts is on here. Hey guys, I'm just uh, checking in. Yeah, I'm really on there. I'm, to say uh, Merry Christmas and uh, Happy New Year. I just recently moved to Cape Cod, Massachusetts, well, and uh, I'm walking home now uh, from the grocery store. It's uh, just a little beach town at the very end of the Cape, and oh. uh, let's see if I can show you. This is, uh, I don't know if I can zoom in on Zoom, but that's the Pilgrim Monument all lit up for the holidays. It's the um, tallest all granite structure in the world, as I oh understand my. it. So I'm just walking on a little back road here um, about half a mile to, to my little place. So I just wanted to say hi to you all. Well, how long are you going to be there? Uh, I indefinitely. <laughs> this this is home now. I oh, okay. I, I graduated uh, with the MBA from IU South Bend, and uh, and I am. Um, let me turn this back around, I guess, so you can see me. Yeah. So uh, I just I moved here right uh, before Thanksgiving. Um, I just had a really terrific opportunity that uh, 
And of course I was do, doing the work and then uh, an opportunity that I hadn't been looking for or planning on really just fell into my lap. You know, it's kind of like, uh, kind of like have a plan and do the work, but remain flexible and uh, open. So I'm, I'm really happy to, to uh, now be, be settled. Cause I, you know, I was there in sulfur for a bit with, uh, with my grandmother, Carol, helping her out with some stuff. And, you know, she got, she got to being and feeling well enough to, you know, be doing things on her own. And, and so, you know, I, I got to turn my focus back on what I'm doing next. And so I'm happy to, to be getting settled here. Okay. What kind of work is it, Jeremy? Hang on here. Let me um. Let me see here because my, oh, there's my uncle John. Hey, Jeremy. My my great uncle John. I I was just popping in to say hi. Uh, your Good. friends here are gonna have to catch you up, uh, because oh, okay. I'm not gonna waste your time or uh the the recording uh, of interesting memories and stories to repeat my little thing. Oh, I think that's Tim. Oh, now I see Bob Roberts. Um, hey, I'm but anyway, to, oh, and I oh, finally got this thing uh, turned Leslie? on. <laughs> it, like, it takes me a while. Is Leslie back in Hawaii? Uh, going. I'm, I'm a I'm little slow. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. Well, it's so nice to see you all. I, um, I was... I think Gordon, you were maybe you were asking me something, but I, I can't really hear you all well. I'm on my phone. I'm walking, and um, the speaker is there's something wrong with it. It's not clogged, but it's just uh, it will not um, it will not elevate to a reasonable level. So I can either hold it up to my ear, and you're looking at my cheek, or I can just bid oh. you all farewell. Tell you it's nice to see you. Happy holidays. Take care of yourselves, and I'll let you get back at it. I'm going to have to figure out how oh, to get good. it. Oh, good to hear from you, Jeremy. We never get to hear you from you. <laughs> yeah, well, you you know, you guys after after a year of of uh, us doing that, I think you you kind of got the the drill down. I almost missed my turn here. Um, so uh, yeah, I don't think I thought I, so, but. Jeremy, maybe you can help me. I've got something on here. It says University Information Technology Services. It's taking up the whole page. It says, hi, I'm KB, the chat pot. And, and then I've got just a few little pictures of you guys way over on the right side. Yeah, me I too. Me too. Out of that. Um, I, well, you know, maybe if I disconnect here, that'll change because, you know, I've got it's it set up. Down you, the bottom. So that you all can can meet without me being uh, connected. There's like a, a way to configure that. Um, so if that doesn't, if I disconnect here, if that doesn't solve it for you, um, see if you can either minimize or close if that's a window, or 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 click on where you do see people, so that maybe that'll you know bring it into uh, the foreground. I, but but I don't I don't know. It seems like that's something that Leslie had happen at one point when you know when I was hosting the family zooms but um but I don't know you know and, and it might be because I'm on my cell phone joining too I I don't know but I'll I'll disconnect and hopefully it'll work uh, I, I also saw that Bob oh there Robert we go sort of yep. was it worked. it worked right now, I, was at, I, had, I had a share screen that I clicked that off and put everybody up where they were supposed to be there you go. Is it, there you go. You, okay. Did get every, every, every one of you fixed up? So you're looking, you, you guys are looking good now? <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's coming in fine now. Yeah. All right. I had this share screen and I clicked that off. Oh, so gotcha. It went back. Okay. <laughs> so it had, see, see, you guys don't need me. I, I, I didn't know. Uh, how to solve the issue so i didn't even know what the issue was but yeah if, if you click on share screen like i've done i've done that before yeah. where i've wanted to kind of take control yeah, and show yeah. everybody you know something so all right well i'll let y'all uh, get at it it's wonderful to see <laughs> you all take care and enjoy your conversation oh you too all hey, right Jeremy. thanks a lot bye-bye
Bye. Yeah. Uh, he, he, he's a lot of lobster while you're up there, will you? <laughs> oh, de definitely. Where, are, where is Jeremy? Connecticut. Oh, he is? Plymouth, Plymouth, Connecticut, along the hook. Well, he, he travels around then, doesn't he? Yes, he does. I just got on he here. So. so it looks like every, how many? There's supposed to be six on here. Looks like John got his food. I got my food. Yeah. I got starved to death. <laughs> it's like she says, John. It's, it's lunchtime in Hawaii, I right, saw, John? I saw you had somebody waiting on you. Oh, yes, that's, that's very handy. So what time is it out there, John? 12, 12. So you've got noon. We just had our supper. Yeah, I just spent an hour on the Flanagan Zoom. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't get time to eat before this. So. How's, how's Brother Mike doing, John? Well, he's pretty slow. Yeah. He, they brought his dog in there and, and he couldn't remember his dog's name. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Well, is, we, he able, is he able to get out and round or anything or do they have to pretty well wait on him hand and foot? Well, they pretty much wait on him hand and foot. I got a feeling that he, he probably could get out and around a little bit if he put the effort in. But he's, he's happy just to sit quietly and, and vegetate. I know my sister-in-law is having an enormous amount of difficulty with arthritis in her ankles. Oh and she inherited that from her family. It's a family thing. And so quite often they are confined to their, um, they are confined to their uh, wheelchairs. And that's oh, pretty yeah. much her situation. But what's that say? I make beer, what? Huh? What's that say? I make beer what? Disappear. <laughs> What's your superpower? Huh? <laughs> That's wow. pretty good. Oh my goodness. So is this the crew tonight? What's that? Is this the crew tonight? Does this occur tonight? The crew. crew. Oh, the crew. Bob Roberts was on here a bit ago. But just to let you know, I was out in Indiana for about less than 24 hours last weekend. So it was really nice. The uh, crew that I graduated with in 1970 uh, decided to get together. And one of them phoned my wife while one of the ladies did while I wasn't home. Well, lo and behold, my wife got on the internet and she found a, a flight from Manchester, New Hampshire, through Charlotte to Evansville for like 375 bucks round trip. So I said, well, I, my goodness, I'm not going to, you know, I can do that. So I, uh, we, we booked it. And so, and it was such a nice, it was such a nice fl flight. And uh, the lady who's normally on here, um, what's her name? Jella. Jella. Uh, star, she uh, we met um, at that restaurant that she was talking about, and you know, some of their food was good. I mean, like the breads and the desserts, and even the chicken. But there were some there that I don't know, maybe they're just not cooking the way they used to. But like you say, it was quite different than I uh, could had seen in the past, but it still had a good uh bunch of people there so they're still doing very well which restaurant did you meet do you remember uh it's down yeah. by uh it's down below bird's eye it's uh what's it's, the name it's a german name schwartz family restaurant you said it okay yeah yeah they've been there for years i mean yeah, the family has and, uh, this. Of course, is, I don't think they did that until uh, 
uh, State Route 37 went south and went over there. But, you know, flying into Evansville was fantastic. I couldn't believe it. It was real quiet. And Manchester here, usually they don't have those deep discounts from the smaller uh, airports. And so but for some reason, this particular weekend, in fact, I think they have been doing it, uh, but it's not a, a regular thing in November as well as December, trying to get people to fly out of the uh, smaller airports. <laughs> And so, you know, building up ridership because you have to go to Charlotte no matter what you do. And so that's their hub, uh, the American Airlines. And so, but it, you know, it was such a wonderful trip and I really enjoyed seeing the people. And so. How many, how many people were there from your class? I, there were about 15 from my class. And so, yeah, well, the, class, the, the class of 1952 met last Saturday at the Overlook at Leavenworth, and all were in attendance, right, Vic? Every single person was in attendance. That was pretty amazing. 1952. 52. Was that Della? Was she with you? Oh, of course. <laughs> that was last that, not this, not yesterday, but a week ago, right? Uh, that's correct. Yeah. Wow. That would have been Wish I could have gotten up there, but everything. I was... want to check on the, your class and everything. I went up to the library and uh, I got to think out at uh, 1952. Yes. And I turned and looked at the first one and said, donated by Victor McGillity. What was it donated? Uh, it was your annual. Your oh, book. my annual. Okay. Yeah, it was donated. He donated it to the library. Well, Maybe you good. don't remember. I don't remember. Good for me. Well, it, it it's in the English library. Okay. Well, well Vic, Vic said that every single person attended, and in fact, we were all single. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, I was going to if I get if I could get in touch with you. I was going to get up to the library and have them make the pictures of uh, your class and everything and give to you, but we never did get together. I'm very sorry. Right. Yeah. Well, we invited Bob to go with us and uh, he had a conflict and that was fine. We ate your share of the food, Bob. Well, good and everything. And uh, uh, Gordon said he had to play Santa Claus, but he's really not really built yet for a Santa Claus it is unless he's got some stuff he I'd have to have yeah <laughs> now we did find out Bob for your information you know the overlook is for sale did you know that I know that and stuff and, we, and everything and we found out the, we found out the price and I think Gordon and maybe even John from Hawaii might want to invest in the overlook restaurant at Leavenworth oh my it's just one million dollars, John. Just a million. Just a million. Do you think they'll take it for uh, uh, less? I bet. I bet you could make an offer, and they would strongly consider it. Depends on who. I you heard have. a million, but I don't know whether that was it. I stood up early Saturday morning watching that tornado work its way up through. Uh, Kentucky and those yeah. storms were going one way and the other from Crawford County. Yeah, and, uh, and we had a lot of thunder and lightning and wind here in English, but very little rain. That uh, I was looking over the creek today and it wasn't even muddy, so we didn't get a hell of a lot of rain. Yeah, but uh, we had uh, electricity flickered a couple of times, but I sat up until two o'clock and. You could see that dude working all the way through there, and it's absolutely, uh, it was like the one that passed through here in 74. Yeah. But, uh, uh, one, one building that collapsed, they had 120 people in it. Yeah. Um, and uh, there have been 40 of them taken out of their lives so far, but they figure they're going to be well over 100 people killed. Yeah. And the thing, Mayville, Kentucky, caught. Uh, 
Uh, let me tell John Flanagan. Bowling what? Green caught a lot. What did you have there in uh, New Albany, Dick? We just, had some th we just had some thunder and lightning, wind blowing, but nothing, nothing of significance at all. Yeah. We and were uh, a lot of, we were getting a lot of uh, attention because of our blizzard and, and rain. And then this tornado came up and put us on the second page. Oh. I got well, and John, two. when I heard several days ago that there were blizzard warnings in Hawaii, I thought, did I hear that right? Yeah, and of course, there was yeah. blizzard warnings. Now, let me I was you. at up, up 13,000 feet in the, yeah. the mountains, wasn't it? It showed a picture of it on yeah. TV. Right. Now, let me, let me tell you what I heard on CNN about two hours ago. It said that that blizzard, the low pressure from that blizzard came across the Pacific to the Northwest and created the tornadoes in Kentucky. Not true. The blizzard from Hawaii, that low pressure, created the blizzards. I mean, the the uh, tornadoes in Hawaii. <laughs> no, in Kentucky, yeah, excuse me. That's a great oversimplification, but yeah, there, there is a flow <laughs> that they call the holly, the, the coca, what is it, the pineapple express. Oh. So the, the weather pattern tends to take weather across Hawaii and up and enters the west coast. And, but by the time it gets over to the Midwest, it's a totally different system. So don't blame it on us. Okay, all right. <laughs> well, isn't that the interaction between the cold air and the warmer air that they've been having in that area that causes the tornadoes? Yep. Yeah. 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 Moist air that comes in from the Gulf and the cold air that comes down from the North. And when they meet, it's pretty interesting. I was tickled to death to have it warm when I was out there, I know, because 60 degrees just felt like I was in a, a sauna just about. <laughs> Although we had been, ha we had had last two weeks ago, we had 60 degree weather. And, uh, but I also was in, uh, Two weeks before that, at Thanksgiving, I was down in Williamsburg, Virginia, and they hadn't lost their leaves, and Hampton Roads was just, you know, it, it was almost sultry down there, and they said that was definitely uh, unusual for Virginia, so I figured uh, John's brother definitely got in on that, so. Leslie, Leslie came in from Oregon, and we're having, we have lows at night of 72, which is really cold. Uh, yeah. And Leslie comes down and turns on the fan and fans herself, and she <laughs> uses the air conditioner up in the bedroom. We, you can tell that the visitors from the locals here, because when it's in the low 80s, up high 70s, we're all wearing sweaters and parkas, and they're all wearing shorts. And, and <laughs> I came to Hawaii back, oh, I guess it was 1994. And I, uh, of course, I came from New Hampshire where we had been having blizzards and everything like that. And of course, do you think I thought to bring a coat? Uh, and so uh, when we got there, well, I went out to the North Shore to a church out there. And lo and behold, there was this girl out there she barely had anything on and she was just shivering to death. And I just laughed at her because I couldn't see, you know, I, I just didn't make sense to me. And she cried because I was being so offensive to her. <laughs> and then finally she did explain what was happening that the weather was definitely much cooler than she was used to. And of course I was like, John was just saying, doing like Leslie, I was uh, going crazy because, you know, everything was so warm. And of course, when I got back to New Hampshire, well, then it was cold again. So I thought I'd have a reprieve from the cold. And then I got back here and I was all messed up. My whole system was messed up and I couldn't take the cold again because I'd had that brief respite during, in February. So I had, to, I froze to death until March. So I had never had that 
happened to me before. So I don't, a lot of people go to Florida in February or January, but I, you know, like to say, I have uh, decided not to do that for that reason, so. Okay, I'm going to admit, I've been trying all this time. I still haven't figured out who you are. The person that's talking, my name is Timothy E. Oh, okay. Well, okay, yes. Yeah. This is the first time I've been able to get on here with voice as well as with a, um, a picture. Okay. So, like okay, you say. Like no, that was Phil Philip who? I'm sorry, Bob. What, what, what was your, who, were you Philip what? Was it, you say your first name was Philip? No, my first name is Timothy. I delivered newspapers to you when you, when uh, back in the uh, 60s. Kenny? My name is Timothy. Eads son. Bob. You got it, Vic. He's another preacher's kid. <laughs> yes, Gordon, you and I were preacher's kids. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> so, who else? Oh, just Gordon. two of us, wasn't it? We don't, we don't, we don't have uh, just some letters for your stuff. There, the rest of us has names that uh, I don't hear worth a damn. And uh, unless <laughs> I can read, I can still read, but those I uh, don't hear very well. Well, those uh, letters, like you say, this is the first time I, I'm on a phone, and so this is the first time I've ever had a chance to um, to see you. Uh, well. For you to see me, I've seen you all the time, and a lot of times I don't see the, uh, I don't hear you, but I, you record it, and then I can listen later, but uh, so this is the first time I've been able to actually join you with picture, voice, and so you just probably have to tell me, but the thing is, I don't have a thing on here that tells me how to mute myself, so. Oh, <laughs> yeah yes john <laughs> the preacher's son you don't need to be muted <laughs> well i can i share one more thing i guess i can <laughs> i know course. the people at um at the get together last week were so astonished as to what you guys were doing they all knew who you were and so I told them, you know, to log into the Crawford County website because that's how I, I wasn't even looking. It just popped up for me. And so, you know, but apparently it didn't pop up for them. And I thought maybe some of them might, you know, get the information, might join us, but uh, they haven't. And so what I, I guess I wanted to do was, was ask, should, if they ask to join us, can I give them this Zoom information or should I just tell them no? <laughs> because they are younger than you guys. They're my age. <laughs> I would say the more, the more English graduates that could join us, the better. Well, they all knew who you were. Just like me. I mean, they knew Martha Jane. They knew Gordon Husk. Because the Myers family, Apple family down in Grantsburg area, a lot of them were there. Uh, oh, uh, Dimbos were there. Uh, and you guys all know those, at least Gordon Husk knows those names. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. And so, you know. My battery is low. I got to go get my charger. Okay, but so they, uh, you know, like say they were Grantsburg Mifflin people, a lot of them that were there. And then uh, do any of you remember the, uh, um, uh, shoot, uh, Patton's out in Chadswell? Yep. Yeah, Big all family. those girls. Big family, lots of girls. Oh, yeah, all of them are good looking. Yeah. They are, they, of course, they, and, the thing is, it's still there was off. One, one boy, in, one boy so, in the group. That's right. Well, there were two. 
there was Frank and there was Bill. And Frank and Bill, of course, they were older and they, they were probably closer to your age because there was a good one that married a Goodson. And she's almost 87 or 88, but she's in a nursing home down around New Albany, I know. Well, if they're my age, you had about seven years on that, and you've got it. <laughs> well, I know, but I know that she isn't your age, but I that's why I was saying what I was saying because because Frank Patton would have been probably, I think he was the oldest of Guido and Esther's. And uh, so he's been out in Arizona for years, and I, I'm positive Frank's got to be in his 80s probably close to 90 by now. I'm usually the oldest person on all the Zooms except except on this one. <laughs> and Bob's got me beat. <laughs> no, you're, 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 an old uh, Democrat, I think it was 2011, it was looking back 100 years and it was giving the names of the teachers. It was an English high school in 1911 and Presley Milton was a superintendent, and uh, Ada Rothrock was one of the teachers, and uh, Leonard Cummins yep. was one of the teachers. Yeah, it was. You know, we were showing a picture that uh, deal had come in before nineteen and fourteen. Yeah, now, did, Leonard Cummins do, did Leonard Cummins do science? What was his? Pardon? What did Leonard Cummins teach? Was it science or industrial arts? Uh, he used to live on East Fifth Street and everything and stuff. He, he was, uh, oh, I, I wouldn't hate to imagine how old Leonard was. Yeah, he, still, was. He, he, mar he married about 100 people. Yeah, uh, he, married, he married John's brother, Mike. I didn't know that. Leonard did, huh? I was walking. <laughs> I was walking down the street in front of Tyler Grill, and a car pulls up. And hey, Vic, Mike Flanagan said, "You busy? No. Come go with me a few minutes." I jumped in the back seat. He had Carol with him. We drove up to Leonard Cummins's house, and I stood up for Michael and Carol. They got married. No kidding. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's interesting. How about that? That's where we got oh, married yeah. too. Oh, good. You got married there, Gordon? <laughs> yes, I did. Okay. Well, I delivered papers to Leonard. I delivered papers to Leonard too. I delivered papers for Leonard too. <laughs> Three different eras. <laughs> yes. Yeah. He was quite a man. Now, I was shooting pool one time in the pool room behind uh, Gillen's Barber Shop. And John Henry Marshall came in. Anybody remember him? Oh, John, yeah. John Henry oh, Marshall. Yeah. John Henry <laughs> said, Dick, are you busy? Well, I was shooting pool. I want you to go with me a few minutes to your granddad's house. So I finished the game, got in the car with him. I thought, well, he's got a ticket. My granddad was justice of peace then. So he we went around and said, no, we're getting married. He had, uh, had a girl in the car with him. So we went in my granddad's house. My granddad performed the ceremony. And I'll never forget this. John Henry said, now, how much do I owe you? And my granddad said, whatever you think she's worth. <laughs> <laughs> he, gave her, he gave her $5. <laughs> he gave him $5. You know, he was, the last he was younger. <laughs> He, when he was younger, he was always doing something. Yeah. And one night, about 11 o'clock, down we was sitting on the benches there in front of Bill Patton's. And here comes a car down there. It had a rope tied on it. It was low gear. And Marshall had the rope over his shoulder like he was pulling the thing right through downtown Angus about 11 o'clock at night. John Henry used to do some odd things. He worked at a cigarette factory. And yeah. in the old car he had, he had one string of cigarettes that must have been 20 feet long, just 
wrapped around the top of his car on the insides. <laughs> the yeah, car was a Nash, a Nash car. Yeah. <laughs> we used to bring those uncut cigarettes to the dance and pass them around <laughs> three or four feet long. <laughs> the story about John Henry, and I wonder if any of you can verify it or deny it. Uh, what was that restaurant in, in Peoria that we always went to? Peelers. On the east side of the <laughs> east side of the square. And anyway, I was told that John Henry went in there one time and was playing like he was holding it up. And the guy behind the counter got a pistol and shot him with a twenty-two. <laughs> Any anything to that? <laughs> I don't heard that. I don't strange things so. went on. I don't think so. What was that? Thinking. Marklins? Marklins, yeah. Marklins, that's, that's it. Marklins. Uh, Marklins. Mark yeah. Mark. We used he to always in. go there after the dance at Amish. Yeah. I know uh, yeah. the guy that was working there that uh, uh, was, uh, I forget his name, he had a body shop. He worked on uh, VWs just outside of PL 137 going toward English. Uh, he was married to Sandra Scout. Oh, yeah. But he was he was a cook. He was a cook in there. And when we pulled in, we normally had a half a pint or something under the seat. And so he would come out there and Gordon, his name was Gordon. And Gordon, he said, Where, where's, where's your car park? We say he'd go out there real quick and come back. And we got the damnedest orders of food that you ever saw. <laughs> John Henry used to walk into that uh, restaurant and say, hey, I brought you a bag of cats to cook. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good place to go. <laughs> yeah. uh, John Henry came into town one uh, Saturday afternoon and somebody said, what are you in town for? He said, oh, I've got to get some baby formula. And so he'd buy a six pack and some baby formula and he'd come back a little bit later for more, for more baby formula. <laughs> <laughs> right. John Henry was a strong guy. He always liked to show off his strength. And I remember one time him lifting the back of a Model T, Model A, somebody's Model A. He couldn't lift it directly. He had to kind of bounce it. He'd pick it up and get it bouncing. Finally, he got it, got both back wheels off the ground. Well, you know, uh, had a sister and uh, Butch Barnett married her. Yeah. And Butch, Butch played uh, on the basketball team with me. It was his senior year. And we had the county tournament coming up. <clears throat> and Butch was first team man. And he got drafted in the army and that Saturday morning, he had to leave to be inducted. Oh boy. And so we won the thing. Back then that was the first county tournament we'd ever won. Huh. And uh, the first half, Marengo was picked to take it and we shut them out the first half. They didn't, they didn't make a score the first half. Oh. You know, Butch Bonnie, was her name, Bonnie Marshall. Bonnie, that's right. And yeah. Bush, Butch went on to be a teacher in New Albany and then later on a principal. He was principal out in uh, Floyd Knobs, one of the Floyd Knobs schools, an elementary principal, and they really, really liked him there. Oh, yeah. I was running around with Butch's real name was Glenn, but uh, we ran around together when he started going with Bonnie and stuff. And we come, uh, her younger brother, he was something else. We haven't heard, we haven't heard from Bob Mason. He's oh, Bob, what's Bob. going on down around your <laughs> neck of the woods? Well, uh, you, we were talking about how weather was. We had almost 70 degrees yesterday. Oh, boy. Yeah, we, we did too. Yeah. But it was 26 this morning. <laughs> I don't think I've, uh, they've given the temperature in DC as low as 20, 26, but I've not had anything below freezing at our house. Well, 
Well, I can't any I can't get anybody to feel sorry for us in our seventies. <laughs> we're suffering. No. We're going to get down into the sixties one of these days, and I don't know what we'll do. John, what, what, what kind of flower is that, John? Right behind you, over your right well, shoulder. What this one right here? Whoops. No, the one I, right there. That one. That yes. is a bouquet that was brought to us when we had lunch with our son and daughter-in-law and her uh, sister. And they okay. brought that bouquet over for the dinner. Very pretty one. It's very nice. Oh. Bunch of flowers. I see you got some uh, old telephone insulators behind you there. Oh, yeah. I, I got, when we were getting ready to get rid of the house, I went back to that smoke smokehouse back behind and got a few of those <clears throat> old insulators. They're not worth much, but they're interesting. Sure. They made good paperweights. Yeah. Good paperweights. Mm -hmm. true. I don't think I've got any flowers to show in the back. It's just just a lot of green leaves. Monstera plants growing all over the hillside there. Yeah. How big is your lot there, John? A little more than a quarter well, somebody acre. Somebody said he lived in the woods. What's that, Bob? Uh, someone said you lived in the woods. Not quite in the woods, but, but we're surrounded by bamboo forest and local trees and things. Looks like looks like we're in the woods. Uh. That's nice, really nice. Yeah, we're very happy with it. Oh, yeah. Got it uh, back in 87. <clears throat> How many years have you lived in Hawaii? <clears throat> we came up here from Samoa in 84. 84. And we rented a house and spent some time looking around to find the where we wanted to buy and we didn't find any because we always like to be in a place like this you know surrounded by plants and things and hard to find a place like that <clears throat> but and the guy we were renting from was a member of a group that were developing this little area here they, they, this is a development with three houses in it and so he kept saying oh you need to you need to buy this house this is going to be just what you want well, we investigated it, but the trouble was it cost more than we could get a loan for. And our, our, our salaries at the college didn't quite meet the bank's requirement. So we ended up doing something that was pretty common here at that time. And that was we developed an, an agreement of sale. We made a contract with the sellers that when we finally could qualify for the loan, we would buy it. And meanwhile, we paid, instead of paying rent, we paid what they would be getting in payments if we had bought it from the bank. <clears throat> so the next year we got raises and it just made the level so that the bank would accept the loan. So we borrowed the loan. We bought for 162,000 and this year, I'm appraised at a million five. Oh, oh, yeah. Scary, yeah. How many bedrooms do you have, John? Four. Four bedrooms, all right. Four bedrooms, two and a half bath. Do you have uh, anybody from uh, English ever visit you? Well, rel relatives do. <laughs> I don't know that we've had very many non-relatives from English area. We have a lot of people, of course, we were in American Samoa for so long. We have a lot of people from there that come up and visit. That was one of our excuses for buying here was we thought it would be pretty easy to tempt people to come and visit. Right now we've got Leslie visiting. Tomorrow, our son, Russell, will come. The day after that, Leslie's daughter, our granddaughter, will come. And the day after that, her boyfriend's going to come. So we'll have quite a crowd here. 
Yeah. Now, Let me break on my dad's right. granddaughter a little bit. She's she's just starting her graduate work at Emory University in Atlanta, oh, <laughs> majoring in uh, public health, and she's got an in internship at the CDC uh, centers for for uh, uh, not disaster control, but disease. She's got an internship there that she's working on. So she's doing a lot of really interesting stuff. Now the name Leslie rings a bell. Where's Leslie from? Leslie's our daughter. Yes. So she's from Oregon right now. So, okay. Here, here she is. Hello, Hi. Hey. Uh, who in the world is that young lady? <laughs> <laughs> Not young anymore. <laughs> Compared to us, we are. You are. <laughs> well, that's good. We, we need to hear from you more often. Yeah. Yeah, well, you listen I'm, all this. I'm here for three weeks. My daughter comes in on Tuesday, so we're all just trying to get together. All the kids. Get together with my parents and have a nice holiday together. This is this is Vic. Okay. This is Gordon. <laughs> this is Bob. He's older than I am. What? <laughs> this is a lot older than I am. <laughs> that's Jeremy, but he's not here. Okay. That's Tim. Hi. And that's Robert. Okay. And I'm not. I'm the youngest of the group, Leslie. Are you? I knew Martha Jane when she was in English. Okay. He lived with me. You ever meet her? Yeah, Martha Jane, yeah. Martha Jane? Yeah. How are you related to Martha Jane? I'm not related to her. I just, I grew up in English. Oh, okay. I graduated in 1970, but she was, of course, had the newspapers and came to the Methodist Church on Church Street, and I lived up there, so. Okay. Yeah, I used to visit Martha Jane quite a bit. In fact, he was just talking about my daughter, Sarah. I, Martha Jane got to meet her. She was a baby. Okay, so that's where I've heard because when one of you people came, it went in the newspaper. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. News, huh? So that's how I knew what was going on. I love that. I, I, I love going in there and they never threw me out. I was usually there by myself. So, <laughs> but. Uh, Okay, well, I got I'm in the middle of some projects. I remember uh, yeah. when John Blevins ran the linotype school in there, the linotype machine. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Okay. you know, uh, John, John used to, uh, he liked uh, the bottle a little bit. And occasionally he would get pretty well loaded. Yeah. And he would uh, drop in probably at Leo Land's drugstore. Yeah. And uh, Leo had a coal house out behind his place so he would take John and lock him in the coal oh, house and he'd sit on the ice, <laughs> uh, ice cube. finally Mrs. Blevins would come around and look at him and said have you seen my husband and stuff and we knew where he was and we said yes sir. I'll give you a dime if you bring him home <laughs> so we would go down there and open up the door and get John out, and I mean, he would be black. Oh my! We, we would we would take him home. He lived down past John Job's deal, and uh, turn him over to his wife. <laughs> that was the ice house. My goodness! No, no, that was there used to be right behind the drugstore. There yeah. was four or five buildings, and all of them had coal in there, and they served a place there for Harry Stewart's and Doc Patton's and for uh, the drugstore and stuff. And uh, then the, the ice house was up on uh, uh, across from where Gobble's Barn was. Yeah, okay. I still Down think- Down by the, uh, the fire, fire <laughs> firehouse. Yeah, well, the firehouse was in there where Gobble's Barn used to be. The original firehouse was up on the corner and uh, and, uh, my brother was living there in 1932, Clyde, when the Turley building burned down. 
and it also burned his house. And they built the fire, the first firehouse was built there. And later on then, we moved it ahead down to where it was just across from the ice house. And when the big flood came in 79, we only had two, two vehicles that got in both of it. Mm. It was probably four or five inches and where the house was up on the corner of the firehouse, the flood waters ran around that corner there. Really, that high? Oh my goodness. <laughs> it was high. Now, Bob is in the basement of the, the old community building. The flood waters did get in the basement of the community building, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. And it, it got in our firehouse, which was right across from it. Yeah. Yep. I saw a lot of floods while I lived there, but I, I, I was away all during that time, so I missed all of it. Yeah. Yeah, there wasn't there wasn't one that touched it. That must have been when they uh, got Bill Beasley out of his house. He was standing up on the kitchen <coughs> cabinets. Cabinet, right. I yeah. believe. Yeah. That was terrible. Paula had a good story about that, too. She was threatened very much. They, her house washed away. She got, she got rescued just in time. She and Melissa. Yeah. And you know, no, no one got killed or anything. No uh, close as it came, one guy was on a telephone pole with his kid. And a guy came by in a canoe and he pitched a kid in the yeah. canoe. Yeah. And stuff. That was the closest to it was a, the rest of the people all got out, but it happened during the day. That's one of the stories that Paula tells about. You know. I know another story was Kenny Luckett trying to save the records in his law office and he got in there and the water kept coming up and it got too high for him to get out and they had to take him out through a window. Well, no, the window blew out and the water came in. He had a back door to it. Oh, and he went terrible? to the back door and Sam, Sammy Taylor was working in the post office and Sammy come out and got a hold of him and let him across there. Ah, but he was trying to stop. He was trying to stop the water from coming oh. in. Oh. He'd cut off his uh, furnace, come out of the floor, and the window blew out. And he got to the back door, and by that time it was probably over waist high. Yeah. And uh, the, the the post office was right behind his building, and uh, it it got into the post office there. And stuff. It, it, I, I, uh, I've, I've said that uh, Crawford County got on the front page of the Washington Post twice in my lifetime. Number one was the flood. The other reason was the thing about the voting. People lived in Crawford County and Perry County would vote locally, but they were living in New Albany and Louisville. <laughs> They were suit brought about. It was on the front. Wonder, is Della May okay? I uh, haven't heard from her today. Or uh, Ron Kissel, do you think he had too much birthday party? <laughs> you don't know. I don't know. I was down in uh, English made the news again one time. I was at a teacher's convention in New Orleans, I picked up the morning paper and I was reading it. And there was a story focusing on Salem and English. Bob, you probably remember when uh, John Marion Hubbard's son. Oh my, the bombs, yeah. Got arrested yeah. because he had planted explosives under a couple bridges leading in and out of Salem and behind an attorney's office. I found out it was him, and uh, anyway, that made the front page down at uh, New Orleans, <laughs> New Orleans newspaper. <laughs> and he had tested an explosive out out at Highland Overlook. That was a shame. That was too yeah, bad. It was. Now John Marion died just two or three years ago, I think. Yeah. 
John Marion graduated from EHS with a perfect attendance record for 12 years. About that. Never wow. missed a day, never was, ty ty uh, was uh, tardy for a day. Great. Do you remember his dad, John Marion? I do not. Uh, John Marion? I yeah, remember uh -huh. John Marion. He yeah, his dad, John, John Hubbard, no, taught school. Yeah, Johnny, Johnny Hubbard. Yeah, you know, he used to used to have a little uh, story, I mean, a stand he put up in English Reunion, sold hamburgers, hot dogs, and he had cigarettes in there. But there was 10 of them uh, for, a nickel, uh, for a nickel. And uh, it's the only time we could ever get tailor-made cigarettes. We always had bull derms or we rolled our own. <laughs> we would go in and get a pack of those to go down the creek bank and just sit there and smoke. We were big shots. <laughs> John Hubbard sold those? Pardon? You say John Hubbard sold those? Yeah, he, John, Johnny John Hubbard. Sold those. The Sunshine John was Mary. the name of the cigarettes. We'd, we'd do that kind of stuff, and then we'd go over to Leo Lands and buy some but what were those little things that we put in our mouth and think that that covered up the smoke breath? Sense, sense. Sense, yeah. Sense, sense. Get over and buy it from some sense, sense in Leo Land. <laughs> Never fooled my parents at all. Oh, yeah. You could get a package of marbles. Was it marbles? Marbles. Yeah, marbles for 10 cents. 20 cents, one, one penny. Yeah, 10 cents. And the other two, camels and lucky strikes were 15 cents a pack. Right. Now I think that the cigarettes are maybe over $5 a pack. Yeah. But I'm glad, I'm glad I quit smoking when I was 35 years old. <laughs> That's about when I quit too. <laughs> well, I'll tell you boys, I think we're running out of time. That uh, Jeremy, if he was here, he'd run us off. Well, good well, seeing you again. Nice seeing you guys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice talking to you. That missed a few of them, though, there. That, uh... See you next month. Okay. Take care, everyone. Bob, you you guys, guys have, a, you guys have a nice good. holiday. Have yeah. a nice Christmas. Okay. Nice, and warm. Warm. nice Christmas. See you next year. Okay. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas Happy everybody. Year. Okay. Bye bye. And thank bye -bye. you, Jim, for doing this. Thank you, Jim. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye.